As we know by now, the coronavirus has been hitting older people especially hard. What does the science tell us, though, about what the risks really are and how can older people stay healthy during this pandemic? Because we are still in it and will be for some time. Joining us live is Dr. Bruce Trowan. He is a professor of medicine at the University of Buffalo, specializing in geriatrics. Doctor, thank you for being with us. Let's first talk about the symptoms and how they appear in older adults and why it is so much more dangerous. Yes, indeed, and good morning, and thank you for having me on. Uh, so it's important to recognize that older adults actually have different manifestations. So even though we know about the classic symptoms that associate with COVID, including respiratory tract symptoms and fever and cough, it turns out that many older adults may not have those at all. Indeed, one of the first signs may actually be confusion in an older adult, particularly those who already have some existing cognitive impairment or dementia. Another sign may be an exacerbation of a pre-existing illness. So if you have underlying congestive heart failure or kidney disease or lung disease, it may not seem that you have an acute infection, but if those worsen in the absence of other triggers, then that's also another sign. Also, older adults could have non-specific what we call constitutional symptoms with muscle aches uh, and actually even older adults could solely have nausea vomiting and diarrhea so this is a different spectrum than the classic that was originally portrayed with younger individuals and we've talked a lot about um, the, most of the fata fatalities sadly have come from people who live in in communal settings in, in nursing homes assisted right. living centers can you talk to me about your concerns about that environment versus um, Americans just by virtue of their age are at a right. greater risk. So we're dealing still with uh, uh, accumulating information. We know that in Indiana, unfortunately, almost half of all deaths have occurred within a long-term care nursing home setting. And indeed, when we put that risk in place, we often think, well, maybe 98 or 99 percent of the population uh, will get through this okay. But to have a one or two percent death rate for the population is actually catastrophic. And when you look at that in an age stratification, that death rate could be 10 or 20% once you get the illness. So we know that vulnerable, frail, older adults are particularly susceptible not only to contracting the disease, but also suffering horrible outcomes. What we do not have a good beat on is to what degree are community dwelling older adults with similar underlying medical conditions at risk. And all of us believe in the medical field that that risk is very similar. It's just that nursing homes have unfortunately been a perfect storm, a cauldron for transmission of the illness, whereas many older adults in community settings have been able to isolate, have been able to distance. So I think that discretion needs to be the better part of valor now. If you're above, and actually the risk increases above the age of 60, so once you're above the age of 60, and if you have any other existing medical issues such as uh, diabetes, heart disease, kidney disease, lung disease, and even if you are obese, you're at higher risk. Mm -hmm. And the danger here is that even if uh, you think that the risk of getting disease is not so great, once you get it, the consequences could be dire. Many in the medical community really believe that uh, testing is the key. Do you think that there is enough testing available? Because frankly, doctor, we hear a lot of discrepancies about how much right. testing is available in nursing homes and assisted living centers. What's your feeling on that? Yes, right. Uh, so actually the state of New York has now mandated that nursing home staff need to be tested twice a week. Uh, and this state and other states, uh, such as Massachusetts, have indicated that residents should be tested at least once a week. So a single test doesn't doesn't accomplish what we need to do. We have to be di uh, vigilant and diligent in ongoing and have regular testing. And is there enough now? No, there isn't, unfortunately. So we not only don't have enough even in those settings where there's a much higher risk, whether it be nursing homes, meatpacking plants, uh, but we certainly don't have enough for the community. And here's an indication why. As we've increased the number of tests, look at the test positivity rate. If with an increased number of tests, the percentage of individuals getting positive tests is still increasing, it means we do not have enough tests and we're falling behind. So this is a very, very nationally uh, distributed challenge that we have yet to face completely. That's why I'm glad you are helping us put the focus on that. Doc, we're up against the clock. Thank you for your time and your perspective. Be well. Sure. And hopefully okay, we'll get a chance to talk again down the road. Great. All right. Stay safe. All right, you too. 917 now.